Hey guys, what's up? Finally we have a nice sunny day and uh, we're going to continue work on the Z here, getting it ready for dyno tuning and the entire mega squirt setup. Um, specifically in this video we're going to be working on the fuel system, getting the uh, fuel filter, fuel pressure regulator and all of the lines made up. Um, from the last video we already have our injectors and rails mounted on the lower intake manifold and we just literally have to connect everything together now and finish it up. So we're going to start over here with the feed and return line. Um, it's a little hard to see, sorry guys. But um, as you can see down there, we have the two hard lines, uh, the one on the front side here, this is going to be our return, and then the smaller one over there towards the back is going to be our feed line. And in order to connect our uh, AN lines, um, I do have these little uh, adapter fittings that go from the hard line to a AN style fitting, so I'm hoping we can get those to work. Um, so basically right now they're just the barb fittings and in order to get these to work we have to cut off the just the top part uh, the top part here so that we can fit the flare over um, so I just have those little um, line cutters that you go in circles with so we're gonna start off by cutting these two tips off and then we're gonna start and get everything mounted to the car all right, so I just finished cutting off the barbs on both the inlet and the outlet. Um, so this is the outlet right here. The inlet is actually way down over here because there wasn't a straight section long enough in order for me to get one of these um, flare fittings on. So I had to cut it right down here near the frame rail, but that shouldn't be an issue. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to use these guys here. So if we take it apart, there's going to be this little brass um, compression fitting that's going to go on second first of all it's this little guy here with the little um, lip on the end that's going to slide just on top of the fuel line and then the compression fitting goes next there we go it's actually a really tight fit i had to actually sand off a little bit of the coating on the fuel line in order for it to fit but it should be nice and tight and now with those two on, we have our top fitting. It sits on top until it bottoms out. And then we bring everything together and we tighten it down and it should stay still. Alright, so now that I have the uh, AN fittings onto the hard lines, we can start getting the fuel pressure regulator and the filter mounted to the car. Um, so basically, what I was thinking, if we come over here, so we have the uh, strut tower, this is the power steering reservoir, and then the reservoir has this fairly thick metal bracket coming off the side. And I was hoping I can get the fuel pressure regulator to mount just on the side like that, clears all around. And then if I put a 45 degree fitting on the bottom and a 45 degree fitting on the hard line here, they'll match up nicely. And then of course the two side ports will feed back and around to the engine. And then for the fuel filter, this is a, a fuel lab fuel filter. It's a little, um, it's a little big, but it has the AN fittings on it. And since the feed line is all the way down here on the frame rail now, there's actually a lot of space for me to um, make up a line uh, So if we can get it to mount onto the strut tower like this it should clear both the uh, Fuel pressure regular lines and kind of everything around it um, In terms of mounting I'm going to be using riv nuts hopefully um, That just makes it a lot cleaner and easier to mount So uh, yeah, I'm gonna take you guys along with me and we'll see how it goes
right, so just finished mounting the fuel pressure regulator to the car and it turned out really nice. I repainted the reservoir and the bracket and as you saw, I put those riv nuts into the back of the bracket here. It turned out really nice, it's super clean and uh, the paint matches the fuel pressure regulator pretty closely. Um, and I also played around with some of the hard lines down here and how we're going to kind of route the lines. So I just very lightly bent this one to kind of point over there. And then with a little bit of uh, some line, we should be able to connect these ones no problem. And then for the uh, feed line, <clears throat> I put a 45 degree fitting over here. And now we should have lots of room to mount our fuel pressure regulator. It's going to go something like or sorry, our fuel filter, not fuel pressure regulator, is going to mount somewhere over here and all the lines should match up nicely. Um, the only difficult thing about this is we're again going to be using riv nuts, but since we don't have a bracket, we have to just riv nut into the um, strut tower. And in order to drill, we have to do it through the backside because the drill can't fit beside the engine. So I might have to move the coil over or something, I'll figure it out. But um, yeah, we're going to keep going, we're making progress. All right, so I got the fuel filter mounted to the firewall here. It got a little dark last night after finishing this up, so it is now the next day. Um, it is a little rainy and crappy today, but we have a tent now, and we have our light, and we're gonna keep going. Um, but hopefully today we won't have to be outside as much because um, now with all this done, we get to make all the lines, and we can do that inside. So the first line that we're gonna make is just going from the uh, the feed line here to the bottom of the fuel filter. It's a small little, I don't know, six inch line. And um, we'll start with that and then we'll work on the nice long ones that go to the rails. All right, so we're inside now. And I used a extra piece of hose to kind of measure the length that we need. Um, this is just a regular fuel hose. It's great for just template stuff. And then I traced it onto the actual line we're gonna be using. I put a tape mark with a little Sharpie line to where we're gonna cut. Um, speaking of which, this is the line we're going to be using. It is the, um, it's a nylon braided line with a stainless steel braid on the inside. It's 30R9, so it's going to be e E85 and alcohol compatible. Not that I'm going to be running that, but it's just an overall better quality hose that isn't going to disintegrate like some of the cheaper stuff. Um, so yeah, now with this uh, marked, uh, what I have here, these are little um, hose making jaws. You don't need them, but they do help. They're just easy for putting the, um, the hose in between and it kind of clamps it down while you're doing everything. So I'm gonna put this in the vise real quick and then we're gonna cut right there. I'm gonna be using a angle grinder with a cutting disc, um, but there's multiple ways you can cut the line. And then once that's done, we'll get the fittings on. All right, so finished our cut, cleaned everything up, and I did use an air compressor to blow out all of the debris. If you are using an angle grinder, don't forget to do that. Um, but we do have a nice clean cut now. You never want anything that's on an angle or that's all chewed up. Um, so now that this is done, we're gonna grab our fitting and we're gonna unscrew this uh, hose end part. And now this guy has to be pressed onto the hose. I'm gonna use a little bit of assembly oil to help it a little, to make it a little easier, I guess. Same with the, the end piece here. We're gonna put a little bit of assembly oil on there. And then once this is seated fully on the hose, we're going to put it back into here and we're gonna thread this part back into here. And that's what's gonna create our um, leak proof seal. And that's pretty much how you make a hose. So there we go, this one's all finished up. Um, the reason for the tape here is so that you can visually see if this bottom fitting that we pressed on is getting pulled off. And as you can see, it didn't move at all. That's what you want. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do this side and we'll go test fit it in the car. All right, so just got finished up installing the fuel lines. Um, so down here, the one that we just made, right here you can see it with the stripes, it goes from the bottom of the fuel filter to our feed. 
And then I also made another line, it's right over here. It goes from the bottom of the fuel pressure regulator to our return. Those are the only two I've got done at the moment. But um, now with those finished up, I can get ready to build the, um, the lines that go to the rails. Um, it's pretty much the exact same process that you guys saw. Um, just a lot of trial and error, test fitting and whatnot. So I'm gonna take a little break and I'll get back to you guys when I have some progress done. All right, everybody, well, it's all finished up. It took about two to three days to kind of finalize everything, um, but it's all done now. Everything's tight and routed the way that I want it. Um, I'll go over everything with you guys right now and where it's all kind of connected to. So if we start over here on the strut tower, uh, if you remember from earlier, we had those uh, hard line to AN adapters that we adapted onto the stock lines. Um, so the inlet is going to be right against the frame rail down there beside the starter. And then we just have a 45 degree with a section of hose and then another 45 degree that connects to our fuel lab fuel filter right here. Um, and we did riv nut that to the strut tower so that is nice and sturdy and that's not going anywhere. Uh, if we take a look over here, you can see right there's the fuel filter. We have a 90 degree fitting coming off of it. And then all the lines kind of follow this nice uh, curve over here. I also have these little uh, Dash 6 AN hose separators, which again, they help. I would really recommend these if you're gonna have some lines close together. Makes everything look good and just makes everything a little bit easier to uh, kind of organize. Uh, so that line follows underneath here, and then we have this uh, Y block. I'm not sure if I showed you guys that, but it's basically one inlet in and then two out to go to both fuel rails. That's going to be just here, which comes up, and then there's two 90 degrees, which go into the fuel rail. Comes through the fuel rail, and we have two 180 degrees, which loop back up, and then one continuous section of line for both of them come over and around to our uh, fuel pressure regulator which you saw we uh, riv nutted to the strut tower, or sorry, not the strut tower, the uh, power steering reservoir. I did get our gauge mounted with a little 90 degree fitting here to kind of face it forwards. And then underneath we have our return line, which again uses just a small section of hose. And then we have a hard line adapter at the very bottom. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the fuel system guys. I'll give you another quick look here at everything. Feel free to uh, copy it or base yours off of it, get some ideas. This um, nylon braided line, it was super easy to work with. It's not prickly like the stainless steel stuff. It slid onto all the fittings pretty easily without much of a hassle. Um, so I do recommend it. Looks pretty good with the uh, gray stitching in it as well. Uh, a few of you have also been wondering about the fuel pump situation. So the reason why uh, we're not doing a fuel pump in this series is because there's already a fuel pump installed in the car actually. It was actually the very first video we did on this channel. So if you want to take a look at that, I'll kind of link it up in the top over here. Um, but it's going to be a Dietchworks 200 I think it is. It's the, the 255 liter per hour one. It's basically the same as those Walbros. Um, should be more than enough for at least what I'm doing currently. Um, so that's right why you guys haven't really seen much about it But again, you are going to want to do a fuel pump if you are upgrading your fuel system just because the stock ones aren't really the best um, I also have the relay mod which I will link up here as well. You're going to need that for um, Upgraded fuel system it just gives full power to the pump all the time instead of uh, the stock Which is just like ground controlled which kind of varies it varies the speed But um, yeah, just gonna give you guys a quick little look here at everything goes all the way around nice and neatly and back to the strut tower and uh, yeah that's pretty it uh, pretty much it guys for the uh, fuel portion um, next video we're gonna move on to the ignition kind of do all the wires and plugs and uh, we'll go from there so thanks again guys and I'll see you in the next one